anyone that's like, I could never, I could never be in the video or I could never start my own business. Yeah, you can. You just have to do it. Yeah. Like that, the hardest part is getting started. Yeah. Once you've started, you're in it and you did like, you're going to fail a ton, man. I've failed so much more than I've succeeded. Right. But those successes pay off majorly. Check, check. Hey, welcome to the Adler.tv podcast, where there's a new guest in a new location every single week. This week's guest is George Edmondson. He owns and operates a video production company called Seed Creative out of Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Videos these days are a huge part of pretty much everybody's life. Videos can make us laugh, cry, feel good, feel bad. Videos can educate you or tell people about your company, about your family, about your wedding, or about your aspirations. Videos are everywhere these days. George and I are going to talk about the business of video production, but these principles and discussions Discussions can be applied to any business practice. So if you're not a video creator, that's okay. George also had kind of a rough childhood. So instead of me plugging a different nonprofit at the end of this episode, we're going to talk about the positive effects one of the previous nonprofits had directly on George's life. George also runs a private Facebook group with over 3,000 members. The name of the group is Video Creators That Care About Making Money. So check it out if you're a video creator. But if not, like I said, this episode has something for everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, owner operator of Seed Creative in Tuscaloosa. If you need any video work done, check this guy out. Oh, anything, website, photo, he does it all. Ladies and gentlemen, George Edmondson. Yay. Thanks so much for sitting down and talking to me, man. Big time. Yeah, appreciate it. Thank you, you uh, thank you for thinking of us. Like I said, your stuff, every time I see it, man, whether it's like a commercial for a company or a safety video for a factory, or it's like family vlogs of yours. All of it looks amazing, and I don't understand how you can crank out this much content. So I'm here to hopefully get some some tips from you, man. Okay. What do you want to know? <laughs> um, do you sleep? Uh, no, I don't sleep. You got four kids. So so yeah, so I've got four kids. I'm 32. Um wife uh she she's she gets to stay home and uh and hang out with with the little ones but i've got four kids ages ranging from 10 to 3 and uh and no i don't sleep i haven't slept in about 12 years well good good that's how you've opened up this incredible business it's how you've leveled up your business so let's talk a little bit about this history because this building that we're in right now you've not been in very long right uh no uh probably six months or so i think okay cool cool before that you were kind of just working out of your house yeah so everything i've done for the past four or so years has been out of home, we had a bedroom upstairs at our house that uh, that we actually just finally got to to turn into a bedroom for our fourth kid. So she she was just kind of like staying in in other rooms with other children. We've got so many of them, she would just kind of revolve around. But um, <laughs> but yeah, so I was in an office uh, at my house working uh, just until recently, and we finally took the plunge. My wife and I prayed about it a lot, and we we had an opportunity to move into a an area in the downtown. Tus- Tuscaloosa area. Um, and we both decided like, there's no way that we're going to be able to grow until I can get out of the house and get out, uh, be more engaged in the community. And, um, and then that way we can actually start bringing some people on board to help with some of the shooting and editing and stuff, just cause we were starting to get a little bit overwhelmed. Um, which is, you know, it's a good thing. It's, but you know, we were starting to get overwhelmed with the amount of stuff, uh, that we were needing to do. And I definitely couldn't do it on my own. Um, and I, it's just nice to have like a creative space where we can all gather and come up with ideas and, uh, film. We kind of, uh, I know the people listening can't see it, but it's, it's, it's kind of shotgun style room so that, uh, when you walk in, you can immediately, we can start filming and then we turn right there and there's our computers and we can crank out the edits. So that's one thing that we were, uh, really thought a lot about was um, being able to make everything as streamlined as possible. So uh, we shoot it. We literally turn around. Our computer is right there. We can start editing immediately. Yeah, man. When I'm shooting stuff, if the longer the time goes in between shooting it and sitting down and editing it, like you forget what yeah. you shot. You forget what you were thinking when you were shooting it. Like a lot of times I'm thinking, okay, here's my beginning. There's my end. And oh, wait, here's a nice piece. But when you shoot it, you you remember. Right. And hopefully the sooner you can get down and sit down and edit it, you can be like, oh, I know exactly where this is in my 
uh, in my raw footage. Absolutely. And another fantastic aspect about kind of the way that we have it set up is that we can shoot it. We can sit down and even go over with the client for just a second. Hey, this is what the shot looks like. And if we hear anything or see anything we need to revise, we just immediately turn right back around, revise it, uh, shoot it again if we have to, and then we're good to go. So it, it really has wor helped our workflow. Um, and that's kind of the going back to one of the things you said, um, turning content out really quickly. But it also being what we consider high quality content is just trying to get processes in place that will um, eliminate gaps in time between shooting and editing. And so that's that's one of the ways that we've kind of structured ourselves and it's working out well so far. You're very transparent about how your business works uh, on a couple different places on the internet. You talk very openly. You talk real numbers. Uh, you talk real business strategies. You talk real sales strategies uh, on a couple different groups on the internet. And those are closed groups, but those are really only closed because you just vet the people as they come in just to make sure they're not trying to sell anything. They're actually just trying to learn, which is amazing. Right. So, yeah. So one thing that we, I found as I was, I guess, as I was coming up in the industry, you know, uh, to, from when I started, I knew absolutely nothing and all of the information and education that I got was through people that were giving it away freely on YouTube and stuff like that four or five years ago. And we've kind of gotten to a point where I was like, you know what? I think that it's time for, for me and for the guys that work with me to try to give back a little bit to the industry and to the community that helped us out getting started. And so, um, so we created a group because I couldn't find anywhere online, Facebook specifically that was, uh, really there just to help people that needed help. Um, we're not trying to sell anything. We're not pushing any agendas. But something that we do very cautiously is we only allow people in that will answer the questions and answer them, you know, the way that they should be answered. They don't they, they don't just type in random letters just to get something on the board. Right. So we, yeah, we, we, we go through a process, make sure that they're actual people that seem like they're either in the, in the industry or they want to be in the industry. We let them in and man, we just, we talk about it. There's no sense in hiding it. I mean, it, if anything, it's going to encourage other people uh, to know that there are people that started the way I did literally walking around these areas that we have an office in with a backpack and a DSLR uh, and, a, and a MacBook Pro. And I mean, I don't know if this was necessarily legal or not, but just walking into businesses and saying, look, like I'm new. I have no clue what I'm doing. Let me make a video for you. 50 bucks, 100 bucks, 25 bucks. I'll do it. Just anything that so that I know that like what I've done is at least somewhat valuable to you. Um, and I got turned down way more than people said, okay, but the few people that did say, okay, that was, those were the stepping stones and they started to build the foundation so that I could, uh, get a portfolio, show that I'd done some stuff and then just inched my way up. Um, and so, so yeah, I mean, that's, that's just how it all, how it all kind of started. Yeah, man. Something that really struck me really hard, uh, when you're just talking about sales and by the way, speaking of sales, I'm unloading my car just now in the parking lot and George made a sale like <laughs> in the parking lot. He's like waiting for me to get my camera bag out of my car and I turn around and George is like, well, yeah, we could definitely do that for your brewery, man. I mean, <laughs> we can take some great photos, anything you need. And the guy's like, cool, man, I'll call you. And I'm just like, George, did you just make a sale just now? I'm like, what, 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 what? Dude, you have to talk about what you do in order for people to know that, that you're there and that you exist. Yeah. So we've been sitting here, uh, essentially two stores down from um, from a local brewery and I've yet to meet the owner. I've walked in there many times and they're always like, he's not here. He's off, you know, being being awesome somewhere. Um, and he's just randomly out here in the parking lot today. I was like, all right, here's my chance. Like, if I don't do it now, I'm never going to get to meet this guy again. Apparently, right. he's never here. Sure. Um, and and we got to we got to talk, get get each other's names. And he kind of gave the approval to uh to, to start talking about it. So, yeah, yeah. you know, I think that it will be a sale. It's not necessarily a concrete deal right now, um, but we'll see what happens. Hopefully I do. Yeah. Dude, I'll yeah. let you know. I was just like, I, I can just hear that over my shoulder. I'm just like, George, there he is. He's at it again. I've got a lot of sales experience. Dude, so. I can tell, man, like that's something that hit me hard. I was reading through your Facebook posts on suggestions on how to sell. And you were just like, guys, here's the thing. You're not selling people on 
it's going to take you five hours to make a video for their website. You're selling them on how much value that video is going to add to their company and to their website. And you're selling the value Absolutely. of the product. You're not selling the time it takes no. because it doesn't take five hours to make a video. It takes 10 years of experience yep. in order for you to be able to get the skills that then it only takes five hours to get a video done. Absolutely. And I didn't think about it that way. And so I'm, you know, I'm pricing a video, uh, a, a, a wedding video at, you know, 500 bucks for a wedding video. Mm -hmm. And that is, and, and I am, I'm terrible at editing, honestly. Like it takes me 40 hours a lot of times to edit. I'm not right. joking. I'm yeah. joking. Yeah, for sure. 40 hours to edit a wedding video. Yeah. Uh, from, you know, from start to finish. And that's terrible. Like you're not going to, you can't live off of that. Correct. Like, you cannot, you, you just can't do it. So like the wedding, wedding video business is incredibly awesome if you're good at it. And it's, it's a great way to get better because you're, you have one chance to nail the first That's kiss. It. You have one chance to nail the walking back down the aisle. And so as far as a, a video boot camp, doing weddings are amazing, but it's also a hellish place to work oh my at, goodness. at times as well. Yeah. So when I started, I, I got, um, I got a great opportunity to work with a local wedding company and that really helped me get, get my feet, you know, uh, feet in the mud, I guess is the, is the way to say it. But, um, but yeah, I started out with a lot of weddings as well. And that's, no, you're right. That, that's definitely a boot camp to do it. But, um, going back to selling people on value and, and stuff, the way I look at it, time is absolutely irrelevant. Um, if anything, you charge more to be quicker. Yeah. Um, so, so people that will base, uh, base their rates in the video world or in any world that, that is, you know, you're selling your art, basically, um, people that, people that sell on an amount of time, it's going to take me 40 hours. So I'm going to charge you this just in my opinion. Um, that's not, that's not the best way to go about it. If you want to grow, because once we, once I stop doing that and stop saying it's going to take two days to do this and a day to do this. And that's where I got my rate. Once I started working off value and I said, you know what, this company is doing a hundred million dollars a year in revenue. I can probably charge them $10,000 for a video that takes me a day to do. And they paid it. I was like, okay, game changer. They want it quick. I'm able to do it quick. They want it good. We were able to do it good. We're using, you know, $50,000 of equipment to get it done. It's worth $10,000. The fact that we got it done in a day is irrelevant. That does not matter. If anything, they like it because they're able to go to market with the video that much sooner. Um, so anyway, that's that's just how we look at it, man. We don't we do everything by the project. We don't look at day rates or anything like that anymore. Um, we we really, really try our best to just bid out and and base a project on what we think the value and the risk is to the company that's hiring us. Yeah, you wouldn't say to a concrete truck driver that as he comes and you know fills your pool up with concrete or whatever that only took you three hours to right. fill it up with concrete yeah there's a lot more that goes into mm -hmm. it there's the truck there's the concrete there's the license correct there's the, i mean there's all that stuff and a lot of times people don't think about that or see it because we all have cameras now we can all shoot a video uh, with our phones or whatever yep. so like yes there's a ton of competition out there but it's really not the product they they need or mm -hmm. not the product they're looking for you know uh, so I've got something something kind of cool to tell you. So uh, anyone that's listening to this, hopefully, you know, hopefully you find value in what we're talking about and you're interested in the video world um, or you want to be interested in the video world. Uh, something that I've seen a lot of other industry people and professionals start to get a little bit bothered by is the fact that everyone can shoot video. I like to look at things from a different mindset and a different approach. Dude. Everyone can shoot video, but not everyone knows how to edit and make an effective video, right? Right, totally. So we have a client right now that we've set up a system. Oh, dude, it's awesome. Where we're training their clients how to shoot effectively with their cell phones, how to shoot interviews and how to shoot B-roll. They send it to us. We give them a, uh, an upload link. They send it to us. We do all the editing, add some music, add lower thirds, pump it back out. They use it on their social media. They shot everything. All we're doing is editing. We're like a post house yeah. for cell phone video footage. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's like a quantity company, a, a bulk company. But man, we're going to, we're, we're able to, I, I actually just 
before you got here, I was working with another editor that we're bringing on that's going to be doing all the editing of that stuff. So we're now a team of four and we're still growing. But but that new guy, he's literally just there to edit cell phone video. Like, dude, like, take advantage of it. There you go. Don't, don't get, don't work. Who cares if everyone gives you video? That's right. awesome. Right. Like, that's that many stories that get to be told. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's that many companies that are able to um, utilize video, and that's only going to make what we do even more valuable. It's not going to take away anything. Yeah. Like, like embrace it. I tell people, embrace vertical video. Like, who cares? It's just an aspect ratio. Yeah. Like, who cares? Yeah, yeah. Like, use it. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah. It's, you got to cater to how people are consuming it. You can't fight it. You can't try to fight it. It's supply and demand. I will say that selling is so, so important. Uh, It's an important skill to have no matter what you're doing. If you're trying to sell your boss on giving you a raise, like, if you're trying to sell a company on hiring you just, you know, like maybe you're an office and assistant, you know, right. an office assistant, um, whatever, whatever it may be. Selling is a huge thing. And people, I think, struggle to, you know, find that nice line of, you know, it's, it's, it's confidence, not cockiness. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, how do you, how do you, how do you convince a company of a certain amount of value? Are you really going into their books beforehand before uh, a meeting? Uh, sometimes. Yeah. I mean, it, it kind of depends. Do, do you know the term with them? No, no. Okay. So with them, it means what's in it for me. Okay. So that's what everyone is always thinking. Uh-huh. They're they're on the other side of that table while you're saying you need a video. Yeah. What's in it for me? Like, how are we going to benefit from this? Yeah. Um. And so, like, for instance, with the company that I told you about the cell phone video, um, what I did when I when I was contacted by them because they liked their videos and it's a whole long story about how they found out about us, but, um. I contacted some of their clients. I call it a discovery process. And I said, you know, hey, you've worked with this company before. Um, What could they have done better for you, their client? And I wrote it all down. And then I came to the client, my, my client and said, I reached out to some of the people that have worked with you. And here are some of the pain points that we found we could fix with video for them. And that's going to make them more money and it's going to make you more money. So now they know we're going to make more money because of these videos. So that's how we sell them on value. Um, we, you're using these videos as tools to increase revenue. Like it's, it's so simple, but if you just take the time to show them how, and it's really easy to do, you can, you can figure it out. Um, then that's, I mean, that's how you sell. So we don't, we don't sell video just for the sake of selling video. We sell a tool that they can use. Does that make sense? Oh yeah. yeah. So it's, it's, yeah, it's a video, but, but it's a tool. We've been, we've, I've had meetings right here in this room with people coming to us and saying, well, we think we need a video for this. And when we start to look at it, we're like, that's, I don't think that's what you need. That's not going to be effective. Now flip it around. Here's where it can be effective. How much time are you spending with new employees and new hires to to train them on your procedures? Well, normally when we get a new hire in, we're spending about five to six hours with them in a day to train them on our processes. Okay, what if we could make a video to train these new hires for you? Now your manager has five or six hours freed up to be managing and working. And it works. And they're like, yeah, that's a great idea. We do it. People are trained. They freed up their managers to do what they need to be doing, which is managing, not sitting in an office, training someone how to do something that we can make a video in a day and do it for them for the next 10 years. Right, right. And so, um, so yeah, we just, we try to look at everything like we, we don't just sell people a video just because we want them to have a video. We sell someone a video because they need a video. It's going to help them. Um, so that's how, that's how we look at it. It's worked out really well. When I started, I was selling people just please buy a video for me. I don't care what it is. And man, it didn't, I mean, I could sell it, but they were never a repeat client yeah. because my video didn't really do anything for them. Right, right. It wasn't until we started angling it as, as a tool that they can use. It just happens to be a video um, that we started growing and making, you know, good money. And when you sit down and talk to somebody and get knowledgeable about their business and how it's going and you know talking about their growth for next year and things like that they're like whoa this guy is really 
He's honestly giving me some business advice here too. Not only trying to get me to buy a video from him, he's also he's also thinking about my business for sure, which is amazing, man. Like I would never think to do that. I would just be like, okay, what kind of video do you need? Oh, uh, it'll take me twelve hours, and then it'll take me five times that. Yeah, but you're still gonna charge them for twelve. Uh, yeah, charge them for twelve. Let's see, uh, fifty bucks an hour. Oh, that sounds like a lot of money to make every hour. Yeah, know? yeah. Terrible. I am terrible at selling. Terrible at business. Trying to get better at money. Um, doing the Dave Ramsey thing, which right. has been awesome. Yeah. Uh, like my wife and I sat down and just like looked at incoming, outcoming. And like some potential vacations we want to go on. For sure. We're like, okay, you know, like this is this is so much more concrete when you look at the numbers, dude. And neither of us want to do that. And so, if I'm not going to do that in my personal life, I'm definitely not going to do that when I'm trying to operate in business. But you have to. You have to. You absolutely have to. Yeah, and dude, like I'll be the first one. I'm not the greatest at it either. Yeah. Like there, there are some things that I'm really, really good at. Now, my wife is like, I'm very blessed. To, to have someone like her that can sit down and prioritize and she's got all these accounts. Dude, she's got accounts I don't even know about. She's like, well, we've got all this money, you know, over here for this vacation or we've got this for, um, like, we obviously, like, because we are Christians, we have, like, uh, an account that we prioritize just for giving and so, so I'm really thankful and blessed to have her that she is able to do that for me. So I can just go out and have fun, yeah, and like yeah. skateboard and play metal music and stuff like that. Speaking of you which, know, you, uh, speaking of, speaking of which, you want to go? You want to go shred? Yeah, let's, let's let's. All right, let's forget this right, podcast. Well, let's right. just go shred. See you. See you later, podcast. We'll be back. We'll be I think, back. But actually, actually I, I do want to see how you would think about this and plan this out before we actually go shoot. Because I'm kind of like I'm guilty of like having a general idea, but not like a concrete idea. And I know that like ideas change and plans change right. once you get to a location you're yeah. like all right this isn't going to work because of the light and this isn't going to work because of whatever but yeah. like before we were to go out what shots in your head would you have for us to do a cool guy skateboard montage okay so so i guess the first thing i'm gonna do there's always like the establishing shot you have to set up where you are right um but then you also want to get us from point a to point b so we don't need to uh, cut from these cameras and then all of a sudden we're at our location. Okay. Right? Okay. So we want to show that we're here. Okay. We want to show that we're getting somewhere. Okay. We want to show that we're there. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Establishing yes. shot. Here, going, there. There, and now we're there, even if it's three shots. Sweet. All right, so uh, here we go. Skating montage. Okay, is that going to be our tempo? Yeah, do you think about like- I don't like, know. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think about the tempo of the music that you're going to have uh, before you shoot something? Do you ever think about the tempo of it? it? Uh, most of the time. Yeah. I mean, it depends. Like a corporate video is always going to be a little different. And we yeah. do a lot of corporate videos. Yeah, yeah. Um, if, if we know that it's going to be like a fast edit, we'll shoot it in that way. Shoot it fast. Yeah, we'll shoot it fast. Yeah. And like move around some handheld. Yeah. Stuff like yeah. that. If we know that it might be some like cinematic, slower stuff, we'll shoot it at a higher frame rate. Shoot it on a gimbal. Yeah. Um, something like a lot of static shots, uh, stuff like that. So, um. Yeah, but I mean, I'm also like, we're pretty flexible. Like, we'll just go and film and just make crap up <laughs> yeah. a lot of times. So it's always different. All right, for real this time. Are we ever going to go skate? Skating my dice. All right, go. Sk go. Want to do a trick? Want to do a little skateboard trick? Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty big now. I used to be skinny. Back when I played drums like every single day for a for a job. I think I could do a nollie varial heel flip. I think I could do it. I don't know, maybe, we'll see. You should stretch. I should stretch. Ah! Oh! oh! First try and I kind of sort of landed it. <laughs> I'm exhausted now. Can we go back to the studio? That sounds good, man. Yeah, I'm old and exhausted too. All right, we're all uh, sweaty and yeah. nice and sweaty now. Fun skate sesh, sesh, man. I don't think people realize how much goes into creating a video content. Yeah, yeah. just creating content for online, but. Yeah, man, there's so much to it. Like the initial shoot and then 
so many things afterwards and like audio has to be good pacing music right all of it yeah and a lot of times like people use the uh and this has definitely become true i've seen like for me a one minute video is going to take me a minimum of one hour like so whatever project i'm working on if it's 60 minutes long is probably going to take me 60 hours yeah. to edit it yeah like, that's about right and so yeah so people when you watch a five minute video like that was at least five hours of yeah. just editing at least for me and it depends on you know how involved the edit is how crazy it is how quick you're trying to be and how much stuff you're trying to throw in there but um everything to everything takes me longer man it takes me longer to get packed up to go you know everything takes everything takes longer but that's a lesson i'm just having to relearn so but at least you're you know. doing it yeah so yeah. that so that's one thing that like before this is over, I did want to make sure that we say, I know it's super lame and like, it's what Nike says, just do it. But dude, it's so true. Yeah. Like anyone that, anyone that's like, I could never, I could never be in the video or I could never start my own business. Yeah, you can. You just have to do it. Yeah. Like that, the hardest part is getting started. Yeah. Once you've started, you're in it and you do like, you're going to fail a ton, man. I've failed so much more than I've succeeded. Right. But those successes pay off majorly. Um, and so, so yeah, if, if you get nothing else from this, this, uh, podcast or video from me, it's just like literally just go and do it. Don't, yeah. Don't wait around. Yeah, don't man. wait until you're ready. You're never going to be ready. Yep. Yep. Ever. Like you're never ready, dude. We weren't ready to have kids. Right. When we had kids, I've got four kids now and it's awesome and it's yeah. totally fine. It's worked out great. We go to Disney World 5,000 times a year. You do. Like, we, well, I'm going to be there literally Thursday or no, Wednesday. <laughs> I'm leaving Wednesday. Go yeah, to Disney. Yeah, yeah man. That's, you that's you guys love, you guys destroy Disney like three times a year. It's, it's amazing. It's my wife, dude. It's amazing. She's obsessed with what I, I like Disney too. She's just, she's like on a whole. Like she's all about some Disney World, man, and it, it makes her happy. It makes makes me happy, makes the kids happy. So we do it. That's great, man, <laughs> dude. Yeah. In fact, I'm gonna link in the video description. I'm gonna link the video of where you left your backpack. If that's still out there, yeah, I'll, it's I'll out find there. It. Okay, all right. If that's still out there, I'll find it. I'll link it. And uh, cause that was some drama, man. Like oh. as a video guy, I'm just like, what? No. It was not like totally obviously not staged. No, no. no. I left a backpack full of cash. Oh, good, good. And cameras. It was that 5D Mark III up there, a couple lenses. I mean, like all said and done, about four or five thousand dollars worth of stuff in the backpack. Yep. Cause I brought like that was my first time I was like really trying to vlog and make like decent content. Totally. And so I like friggin' just brought everything. Yeah. Um and dude, I I almost died. <laughs> <laughs> so um th this has been really fun and, and like you were the one of my the first people that I texted, I was like, hey, man, we're going to sit down and talk about video stuff. Will you be on my podcast? And you were like, yes. And then just because stuff comes up and because you're my friend, I moved this a couple times, right. which I thought was funny and ironic because I'm like, I'm just being a terrible video client once again. So <laughs> he's just used to dealing with this. Like, because I've had those clients too, man, that are just terrible. They're like, you set a date, you set a time, and then they move it. And you're just like, oh, huh yeah okay then that's why we started getting deposits to hold our date <laughs> guess what guess what doesn't happen very often they hardly ever move the the, the date there so you go man that, that that alleviated that dude everything we do is from trial and error yeah man people moving dates we put that junk to an end quick when we started getting deposits yeah and we're like these deposits are holding this date yeah like that's what it's there for. it's this date it's, it's not the, any date right yeah and man. like we hardly ever have cancellations now man yeah. so it's worked out really well it's smart man it's like you said it's trial and error and um and like you said you got to just do it that's why i'm doing this podcast i'm not ready to make a professional hey, man, podcast yeah. but you're doing it I've and been, so i was yeah. gonna i wanted to applaud you because something that i've noticed and and you can put this in there or not. Sure, but, sure. But something that I've noticed about you is that you that you do tend to start being like, well, I don't do this right, and I know I don't do this good enough. Dude, shut up. Just do it. You're doing it. Like, <laughs> yeah, who freaking yeah. cares? Yeah. That's what I was saying earlier. We're like, we're taking cell phone videos, and we're making effective content. Yeah. Like, you can't get, like, so wrapped up in the technicalities of everything. Because at the end of the day, here's what I've realized. The people online that, that focus so hard on technicalities, bro, are the one that are asking us for work. Yeah. So, yeah. like, don't worry about it. Just get out there and do it. 
Yeah, man. Like, and you were talking about how there's so much information online right. to get better at this. That is true. But then there comes to a point where you have to read and do. Yep. You can't just read and read and read and read and read. Because I've spent a year reading. Right. And what did I create at the end of the year? Two videos? Right. Like, that is not okay. It's so easy to just get bogged down in, like, the the camera blogs and, oh, this next camera. Once that camera comes out, I'll buy that camera and then all my videos will be great. No, it won't. you got to do it. It's like reading about basketball you're not going to get better at basketball unless you actually go out and play basketball truth but, but i posted a video online one time and it was like a ton of tons of drone shots yeah. so like lots of green like leaves and forests and stuff like right. that but all i did was just like punch up the saturation on the video right and you go dude i love this i love all the green in your comment yeah and i was like all the green what's he talking about and then i watched my video again i'm like oh my gosh this entire video is the color green <laughs> so it's just like you just have to do and make mistakes and do and make mistakes you weren't you know you were, you were being kind man you were just being like i like your video man you yeah know, you were being kind but like to do and and then look at something and fix it is so much different than to just like see a video and be like oh they need to fix that you Bro, gotta do it man. oh that fires me up i you can't stand gotta do it do that. yeah but, but there dude i know so many guys online man and i like I know it's stupid and it's lame and I, it's like high schoolish, but like I'll call them out. I'm like, all right, dude, like let's see your video you made last week. They don't say anything because they haven't made anything. They haven't made anything. It's this so year. easy to judge other people and be negative. Yeah. But like, I would rather be positive. Yeah. I'd rather be like, dude, good job, you made a video. <laughs> So at the end of every one of these videos, I like to feature a nonprofit of the week or whatever. Okay. And recently you did a video about a nonprofit uh, or for you did a video for a company that was really close to your heart because you actually spent some time living in this yes this, this nonprofit. Yes. We tell me tell me about that. Man? Yeah. Long story short, uh, we I had a rough childhood growing up. Um, uh, my, my dad was abusive specifically to my mom. Uh, but we, she made the decision to leave and, um, we ended up living in a tent for a while. We lived in our car, uh, and we lived in numerous homeless shelters. Um, and it wasn't until this specific shelter that we moved to, it was called the Hannah home. Uh, now it's called the King's home. Um, it's, it's in Tuscaloosa, one of their campuses. It wasn't until we got there that we had a, a foundation, um, because a lot of these other places are like band-aids and, and they're great. You need band-aids, but they're not there to heal women and heal children that have been through some of the, th you know, things that we've been through. And then some, some people have been through much worse. Uh, so, um, but unfortunately, they had to close down the campus that I lived at. Mm. We lived there for seven years. Wow. So uh, that's how I came to Tuscaloosa was through uh, we needed somewhere to be. Yeah. Um, so we, we, did, we did some videos, but we're, we're trying to write a film and do a lot of stuff about our story and about uh, our life so that we can uh, raise awareness about not only the King's Home, but just other, you know, nonprofits and organizations like them that actually do make a difference. And so I know it's hard for them and it's hard for a lot of nonprofits to see the fruit Um it's years and years down the road until they know if that fruit's any good or not. But like, I'm a product of that. Uh, my brother is a product of that. And we know other people that are very successful in life that are products of uh, all their hard work um, and, and them just being there and available for us. So yeah, we did a video. Uh, they haven't opened the campus back yet, but there are some good things in the works to start getting funding um, back to them so that hopefully this is just a temporary closing. But right now there were uh, many families that were living there that had to be moved to other to other areas. So, uh, yeah, King's Home, they're, they're a great organization. Look them up. Uh, King's Home, yeah, man, they do some great stuff. And that's cool that they're combining to like just, you know, with our powers combined, man. Right. That's an amazing story, dude, to uh, you're talking about fruit years down the road. That's huge, man. That's awesome. And thank you for just for sharing that story, man. Yeah, for sure. Big time. I'm telling you, man, I can't Ollie. You can Ollie. Quit down and eat down yourself, bro. Like, so we try to encourage people like in our Facebook group that we have. Um, we try to always start with an, an encouraging message. I know we're about to have to wrap it up, but we try to be encouraging no matter what, like, 
good job. You made a video and you got a client. Here are the things that could be better. Yeah. But good job on getting the client. And you wrap it up with a positive as well. And dude, that that will help someone so much more than always just pointing out negative and acting like, oh, I know, I know all about this call. Dude, you don't know anything. If you've got time to be commenting on all these videos, <laughs> yes, you're exactly obviously right. not working. <laughs> yes, exactly you're right, not working man. on anything yourself. <laughs> so I don't it's it's funny, man. I've I've seen a lot of them, man, but it, it, at the end of the day, don't don't pay attention to the comments that it, obviously these folks, have, they have nothing else better to do. Just do like just keep doing it, man. Just keep making mistakes. You'll figure it out. You'll realize it was a mistake and you'll do better next time and it'll be fine. Yeah. Like that's how we've grown our business. Lots of mistakes. There you go. So it, it is what it is. Ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, I don't think you're going to get it any better than that from Mr. George Edmondson. Everybody, you can find all his info. Uh, I'll link it below wherever you may be catching this, whether it's podcast or YouTube or Anchor or wherever. Uh, hire his company. They're out of Tuscaloosa, but they work from Tuscaloosa to Australia. They work all over the world. Uh, he's a great guy, and he's going to add value to your company. And I appreciate you adding value big time to this podcast. Thank you, buddy. That's it for this podcast. Find all the links and all the info at Adler.tv. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you're finding value in these episodes. And for next week's episode, my guest is my dentist, Dr. Thomas E. Dudney. And we're going to talk about how the health of your mouth impacts your entire life. So thank you so much for watching on YouTube and for listening on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and on Anchor or wherever you may be catching this show. I'll see you next Thursday with a brand new episode. Peace! Can you show me how to ollie? Ollie, yeah. So, back foot. Oh, that wasn't very good. Dude, man. that was amazing. All right, it's all you now. Dude, this is not going to be good. Hey! <laughs>